Hi, I'm Sug. And I'm Dan. This is the Demystified Zone. Talking about the hottest thing in Korea. No, BTS. Korea. <laughs> oh, I thought that's what we were about here. Bangtan noise. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, what's up, listeners? Welcome back to the Demystified Zone. Hi, Dan. Hey. What's going on? Nothing much, just podcasting. Just podcasting, doing your thing. Just doing my thing. I was I was setting you up on purpose to see if you were going to talk about the weather. <laughs> we had just. I committed to not talk about the weather. Anymore. I, it was a test, and you passed. <laughs> Very well done. We had just spoken about how he comments on the weather. Every but, other episode. But you know what? That's a natural response yeah. in anyone's conversation. In fact. The weather, I would say, you know, I'm going to make up the stat. I would say it's 90% of what people go to mm. when they don't know what to talk about. Do you purpose, do you enjoy like small talk and no? Well, you know, I'm good at it. Yeah, I'm, I'm good at it too. I can small talk your ear off. <laughs> I think that's why we're both on a podcast because we can. Is small it though? Talk. But small talk is so boring. Uh. We're good at medium talk, <laughs> it's a little past small talk, a little more specific. Like, we won't just talk about the weather. We're going to talk about how the weather made me feel today. Mm, okay. And then we're going to use that as an outlet to talk about ourselves. That's medium talk. Yeah. What's the level after that? Is it big talk? Big talk. <laughs> is a big talker. <laughs> I'm definitely not a big talker. I think you're a big talker. You oh, can really? be a big talker if you wanted to. Sometimes you're not in the, most of the times you're not in the mood. What's big talk? I do a lot of big talk. It's just you talking a lot. <laughs> And, and uh, usually at a volume <laughs> that makes it sound big too, because you just want to be heard. Oh, so I see, my I see. volume just continue. My wife okay. will testify. I'm a big talker and she, she gets annoyed mm. easily. I, 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 yeah, I could, I could shift into that gear for sure. Does your, okay, here's a, here's a quick quiz. Does your wife ever say, Hey, you're talking too much. No, she doesn't. Or but, like pull you aside in social <laughs> settings to save the other person. Oh, yeah. really? Leave them alone. Oh, no, no, no. She doesn't do that. Uh, she knows better. I'm okay. Oh, <laughs> uh oh, that's a different kind of talker. <laughs> Oppressive talk. <laughs> oh, talk. Yes. No, um, she doesn't do that. I, I think I have a pretty good internal meter of that. I, I don't like, I don't like center of attention or dominating conversation. You're very aware of your presence and mm -hmm. what you are saying. I like to drop bombs. You have to come I, in I don't and like just to slap shoot people's faces. Machine gun, you know, like I'm just Got like it. boom, and then okay. get, like Costanza, you know, leave on a high note, just mm. get out of there, drop something. But he's kind of a big talker, Costanza. <laughs> like, he talks a lot. <laughs> but Maybe, I get it. I get yeah, what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but okay, big talker. Maybe yeah. no medium talker. Medi medium I, to say small. Medium, yeah. Okay, I'm a big talker. You are. I don't think. I don't think I'm a good big talker all the time, <laughs> but I talk big. Yeah. I like talking with people like you who could just, I could ride your coattails and then, <laughs> and then come in and drop your bomb yeah, when you feel, when I feel the, the opening is the there. Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. I do leave myself for much social bombing. <laughs> if that's You're a, a good setup guy. Getting, I, it's like getting bombed in your photo, photo bomb. It's mm. a conversation bomb. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly. Combo. You're similar. in the background and you just boom, yeah. drop in there. <laughs> this has nothing to do with what we're going to talk about today, <laughs> by the way. Listeners, uh, sorry you had to endure that yeah. uh, intro. But today, <laughs> I was thinking about our episodes and I came across our own podcast and I said, oh, you know what? I never really call ourselves. We call ourselves the um, demystified zone, mm -hmm. and I never use our short our acronym, the DMZ. Yeah. And then I, I went down this train of thought of I we haven't even talked about the DMZ <laughs> on our show called the DMZ. DMZ, right? And it's a, I figured it's about time we're it's a, about, we're it's a about good time. chunk in. We've rambled on about many thing <laughs> many a thing. And it's about time we, we you know, come to our origin story here. It, it, w it would have been tacky if we, like, in our first episodes, talked about the DMZ. So it's a good... Is it tacky, though? It's what we are. We're literally using <laughs> that acronym as a joke, a play on words, if you will. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's not tacky uh, I, now, I'd, I'd at feel least. Like it's a little tacky. Okay, but at least at now, first. you don't feel at, that at same. Now, yeah, we're at episode around 25 ish. This will be. This is it. Yeah. We're going in. We're going into our roots here, the DMZ. Yeah. And if you all didn't know what the DMZ is up until now, you're about to find out. Yes. And props to you for listening, even not knowing what it is. But I, I assume y'all are, I, I think our listeners are pretty smart yeah. on average. I, they're probably smart, at least than us, smarter than yeah. us. Um, the DMZ, let's talk about it. Well, before we talk about it, I want to know, because I had next to no knowledge about the DMZ mm. through my inner circles, meaning my family or anyone who, yeah, outside looking in, you would think they have information about this, mm-hmm. aka like your parents, yeah, uh, cousins, yeah. relatives that live in North Korea, right? Even a trip. How many times you've been? To, I'm not I'm not North Korea. I'm sorry, South Korea. Mm-hmm. Even trips to South Korea as a youngling. How many times did you go to Korea as a youth? You know, I never went until oh. I was like 30. Really? Uh, like 28, yeah. Like when you started going doing crossing border yeah. stuff, basically. Uh-huh. Okay, wow. I didn't think I beat you there, but <laughs> I have gone twice, but one time doesn't count because I was like one years old. Oh, okay. It was for... How uncles. old were you on the second trip? Second one, I was a senior in high school. I missed my senior graduation. And I went to oh, Korea wow. instead, which is well worth it. Yes. It was two weeks there. So um, did you in, love it? In 2000. Mm. I don't think I... I loved it yeah. in general. Yeah. I just didn't appreciate it as much because I didn't... To my own shame, I'm going to say this on air now, I didn't like Korean food growing up. <laughs> yeah. My wife always makes fun of me because I'm like the spoiled youngest child that my mom mm. made me literally a separate dinner. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> than my brother's because she'd always make Korean food. And I didn't like Korean food. And so wow. she'd bake me like spaghetti and meatballs. The very American. Mm. But OK, but I've turned a new leaf. OK, listeners, don't judge me. <laughs> don't judge me yet. I love Korean food now. Yeah. Actually, it was after that summer. So not when I was in Korea. It was the lack of. So I had Korean food for that two weeks. I actually didn't like sashimi or sushi either. Uh-huh. Went to college that fall, and because of like the dorm food, and yeah. like how <laughs> dorm food is, yeah, I just missed. That's dorm home food, food around two thousand. Now I think. Oh yeah, yeah, food yeah. Is like there's Korean food in the dorm. Food. Yeah. <laughs> there's kimchi there's in that like bar. A I specialized bet. chef for each student now. I think. Yeah. Anyway. So I went in 2000. That was the last time I went, which is a long time ago now. Yeah. Jeez, when I say that, it is a very long time mm. ago. Uh, any news on the DMZ for you outside of your time at this organization? Did you know what what was your knowledge basis? Of oh, it? I see. My knowledge base of the DMZ was very surface. I mean, uh, I knew that there was a border between North and South Korea, and I didn't know what it looked like. So did your parents ever talk about the DMZ to you? Never, ever. It's like kind of like um, for us Chicagoans. Have you, how many times have you been to the Sears Tower, right? Like True. Everyone, well, it's called Willis Tower now. But everyone. No, it's forever. The <laughs> Sears Tower. <laughs> exactly. It will never from be here. any other tower. Yes. Yeah, everyone from Chicago, right? Like they, they know of the Sears Tower. They might have been there once, but what's there to really see in a military zone? Yeah, on top of it, it's as if yeah. the Sears Tower was controlled by like Russians. <laughs> 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 and yeah. it's dangerous if you go there too. Yeah, exactly. To the Sears Tower. Right. So okay, that that makes sense. Well, have listener, your parents ever? Oh, uh, okay. Uh no, never. Obviously never. Yeah. Never. I don't so I don't even know. I think I learned about it in like school, which is really weird and mm. random. But no. I didn't learn about it intensely until college. Yeah. When maybe. I, we studied it. Maybe more me too. Yeah. In depth. Mm-hmm. Well, listeners, you're in luck today. We're going to go into the, deeply into the DMZ, a.k.a. not the demystified zone, but the demilitarized zone. Yes. Um, if you really want a quick historical summary a great historical summary of this watch conan o'brien <laughs> <laughs> uh trip six years ago out to south korea with uh actress steven yoon um 
it's a great synopsis of what the DMZ is. Yeah, the, the, the setup for that was very it's accurate. Everything quick. you need to yeah, know. Right. If you want a quick download, go ahead and Google that. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we'll continue from here. So the, l- let's just start from the beginning. All right. Dan, walk us through a little bit about what you know. Um, where is it at? Let's talk. Let's start with the who, what, where, why, how. Okay, like where? We'll start the where. So Korea is a peninsula, north and south. They share a peninsula. It used to be one country, and on that peninsula, it's about halfway down, and it's on the thirty-eighth parallel, like the uh, the lat- longitudinal coordinate. It is the thirty-eight degrees north latitude. Latitude. You know how I remember that latitude fatitude. It's like uh, the waistband of the earth. Uh, yeah. And but you're I, right. I used to be a thirty eight. <laughs> <laughs> By the way. <laughs> we won't say which way you went. <laughs> that was fatitude for, for sure. <laughs> uh well you've improved good. <laughs> I think I'm moving up to thirty eight. <laughs> I'm I'm moving into the thirty eight parallel zone. <laughs> uh yeah, so right. Thirty eight degrees. How did we decide on that number? It it was arbitrary. Uh, it was after World War II, I believe. Uh, the, you know, so World War II happened, and um, the uh, Russians and Americans became the big players in that war because everyone in Europe, up to that point, were bombed up the wazoo by uh, Germany, and so, um, so yeah, uh, the after World War II, the world says, okay, we will divide the Korean Peninsula because we don't want to continue this fight. Uh, we will divide the peninsula, peninsula up between the two superpowers. Who at the time were? Russia and the U.S. Yes. Um, if y'all go to Google, the or great Google. USSR at the time. That's true. It, it was the USSR. Um you go to google arts and culture they did a really great wonderful summary of the dmz history um we'll leave the we'll leave uh, this and the conan thing and yeah you know. we'll, we'll we'll leave obviously links for all this so interesting time um uh if jay if you can go back to that map there's this really interesting hand-drawn map on the top of this if you go back one just yeah i'm sorry I don't know if this is real, but there's a hand-drawn map on the beginning of this Google thing. And it literally just shows a line drawn across and the DMZ. And it looks historical to some fashion. Mm -hmm. Um, And it it, it seems like this is how it was almost decided. (laughs) Just We're going to just draw this line. Exactly. Arbitrary line. It was decided in that way. I, I, I think I read somewhere that it was drawn by people in Washington, D.C. who couldn't find Korea on the map initially. So Of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, it's understandable, right? Like, they had a lot of things to divide after World War II. That's true. And, um, yeah. yeah. Well, you think about, like, the... Um, the military, the U.S. military out in the east during World War II, which the fight, again, was with Japan. Yeah. And Korea was under occupation at the time, under yeah. Japan. So during World War II, Korea was occupied by Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, so the end of the war was signaling the freedom, independence of Korea. However, it also triggered now this Cold War, which we entered into with yeah. Russia, or the USSR, mm-hmm. between the US and USSR. And Korea was this pivotal um, piece of land yeah. that became important and unfortunately, again, used for political uh, positioning and posturing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it must have felt like, because this is our grandparents, right? Mm-hmm. It happened around, our, and when our parents were around when they were born. But f- for our grandparents... It must have felt like, yay, we hit the lottery, but our parents are getting divorced. You know, like Mm. such a great thing that the Japanese are gone. But then this is another. It came at a cost and that. 
Yeah, that cost was the unification of their country. Never was South Korea or never was the Korean Peninsula divided up. Yeah, it was always one kingdom. Yeah, and you put it in a great way of divorce. Because I don't even that's a great imagery because mm. if you remember, the USSR and the United States were technically allies in this war, World War II, against Germany and Japan. Yeah, allies is a loose word. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think our and I don't have enough history knowledge to know how we collaborated or at all, even because we were on different fronts. But I do know that the Cold War was a long lasting war yeah. after World War II mm-hmm. with uh, the Soviet Union or USSR. Was it the Soviet Union at the time? Uh, no, it was USSR. USSR. Right. And so that's a great bit <laughs> because literally North Korea modeled itself after communism. Yeah. And USSR, yes. and then South Korea took on democracy mm-hmm. with the U.S. backing it. Um, and just so you have, at least I put it out there, the definition of the demilitarized zone was a stationing of stationing of military deployment of weapons, installation of military facilities that are prohibited in a certain area. Mm-hmm. That's why it was created. It was so that the USSR and the United States. Um, through their own versions of Korea, would not be able to uh, have a military position to invade the other side of the, the country. Yeah, that's the irony, right? Because it's called demilitarized zone, but it's like the most militarized border in the world. Yeah. But it signifies that this line and how, how far? Uh, north it's and south? two kilometers north and, and south. south. Yeah, and so the there's line, like an upper line and a lower line. Yeah, you can't... Um, you can't... Uh, have any weapons there yeah but right outside boy oh boy <laughs> the, the weapons are lining up triple up <laughs> so yeah you you point out so the actual width so if we're, we're going end to end water to water on this in this peninsula that's the line the width of it was determined to be two kilometers north two kilometers south which by the way i don't even want to get on this measuring systems but we need to we need <laughs> the U.S. needs to get their game together. <laughs> we, need to, we need to leave this system. But anyway, it's about 2.4 miles wide total. Yeah. With the mm-hmm. DMZ or the DM uh, demarcation d- demarcation line being right in the middle of that. Yeah. And it's not straight, obviously. It, it like jags and zigzags mm-hmm. uh, based on the terrain that yeah. they, they figured out there. Um, but that buffer zone just cannot be occupied by anything. It can't even have buildings Mm -hmm. uh, except for at very specific locations yes which was um created by this armistice agreement Mm -hmm. uh of the korean war are you familiar with this do you want to talk about this you want me no the armistice yeah so the armistice was a signed i guess treaty between the north and south it's not a treaty but it is like agreement agreement yes agree to disagree (laughs) It's it an wasn't agreement to any disagree. signature or even a handshake. It was more of like a, a fist bump of a, an agreement. Not even t- it was a <laughs> nod. <laughs> yeah, it was a distant nod to yeah. just saying, "Okay, yeah, I agree." Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, I'm gonna do exactly. other things. <laughs> and this armistice was in 1953, which established the DMZ uh, mm-hmm. again. I think World War, the Korean War started in 1950. 50. Yeah, so this is at the end of the Korean War. Mm-hmm. All right, so I know I'm jumping all over the place, listeners. I apologize. That's why I said go watch Conan <laughs> if you want a really good history dump on this. But World War II happens. North Korea, South Korea are free, but then are controlled by different bodies, uh, USSR and USA. Led by Kim uh, Il-sung, North Korea invades South Korea. Yeah. Korean War starts. Korean War ends when the U.S. gets involved. Um and then it, this armistice signed 1953. Yeah. This thing <laughs> was supposed to be temporary. A temporary agreement to figure it out. I see. Yeah. And it's so, still so going on So we didn't get divo- divorced. We got a uh, trial separation. It's trial separation. That <laughs> never, <laughs> never. Because uh, we couldn't agree on the terms. Mom and dad divorce. just yeah. could not agree. So we're just like lingering on in yeah. this For endless. For 70 years. And now the kids are trying to like <laughs> figure it out, but they can't either. <laughs> the kids are battling for yeah. it. Yeah, now it's the, the kids longest are. armistice ever. Is it? I think so. Oh I, you know, I, I'm sure. Okay, I'm throwing that out there. But yeah, let's look that up. 
but I'm pretty sure in modern history, this is one of the longest. Oh, yeah, it's got to be. Uh, I don't know about, you know, ancient history. Um, so this area, DMZ, it is uninhabited, like I said, except for very specific spots. The mm-hmm. most famous is the JSA or the Joint Security Area, mm-hmm. which is probably what you've seen on any media. It's the place where tourists can go. You can see soldiers on South Korea standing right across from soldiers on North Korea. There's yeah. like a distinct line. Mm-hmm. And then there's all these buildings that are built like halfway in each country yep. for them to come together and like talk. Um, so that's kind of like the most well-known. But there are other areas as well Um there was something called the Civilian Control Line, which was set up by the United States in 1954, which is three 12-mile sectors south of the middle line, the, the military mm-hmm. demarcation line. So that's on the South Korean side. Yeah. The U.S. set up uh, these different sectors, which actually restricts civilians, uh, allows some industry to be there, mm-hmm. right. but um, is a military kind of operations for... yes. I would say the U S and South Korea. Yeah. I don't know on the North Korean side exactly, but I'm sure they have a ton of these as well. They right. do. It's been kind of known that they've been <laughs> doing this. It's just not public. Right. As with all things, North Korea. Mm. Yeah. They, North Korea has a lot of, uh, obviously military operations along the border, which you can plainly see if not by plain sight, then by satellite. Yeah. Here's some quick facts for you. Yeah. Um, I just find this very interesting. So the whole length of the DMZ is 150 miles end to end or 248 mm-hmm. kilometers from the Imjinjang, Imjinjang River mm-hmm. um, in the West Sea to Myong. My God, my Korean is so bad. <laughs> I don't even want to try this, but Myonggori Kosongun of Donghae, which is the east side. That's pretty good. Thank you. I appreciate that. I tried. <laughs> I wrote it out in English. <laughs> to my shame. You would, you would still be reading it if you. To didn't my write shame. It in, in English, I wrote. Yeah. I, you know what though? I can read Korean. It's not. It's you just. Can? It's like a kindergartner reading though. You know, yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. sounding it out. Yeah. But I, at least I can. I can't do karaoke yet, but I'm getting there. Oh, that's hard. It is hard. Um, there are one thousand two hundred ninety-two. Uh, MDL or military demarcation line signs every 656 um, miles. Mm. There's all these signs. Yeah. They used to put up a lot of signs saying, this is the line, don't cross it, mm-hmm. which makes sense. Um, and the distance, I, I, I calculated this for us, Dan, the distance of that 155 miles all across is if you and I went back and forth to our house three times. Mm. We live very far. From, I thought <laughs> we, we live pretty much in other countries right now, yeah. you and I. Oh, yeah. But the the line is actually like the width of Illinois. Mm. From Chicago to about Iowa. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Not the fattest part of Illinois. Not the fattest part. Yeah. 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 But in like right up middle. there. I see. Yeah, it's a pretty big border. Um, it's a pretty long border. And... Um, you know, one, so our, our staff in Korea, uh, they'll take the refugees out for outings and things like that at times. And, um, you know, since for North Korean refugees in South Korea, that's the only place you can be close to their home country. Yeah. On Chuseok, which is one of the biggest holidays, is Thanksgiving of Korea. It's a harvest moon. Um, they uh, took uh, these refugees to the border and they sent a video of this woman um, on the fence. She was weeping, oh. just crying her eyes out. Wait, the fence at the DML, though? At, at one of the these demarcation. checkpoints. Okay, yeah, okay. one of these checkpoints. So actually at the border. Yeah. On, yeah. It's like on Christmas, if you, could, if you could not enter into the state of Illinois where your family is at. That was, yeah, and we decided not to publish that for good reason. But yeah, anyway, it it is a long border, and it's you could look into the other persons, uh, the other con- the neighboring country. So I think, like some of the questions I 
initially had that maybe some of the listeners have too is like, okay, so this is a long border. We're, we're talking about, I mean, it's tighter for sure than let's say like the U.S. Mexico border, right? Oh yeah. Yet people, <laughs> you know, um, can cross the U.S. Mexico border at different locations. Yeah. We don't obviously have every point checked out. Uh, this is a smaller border to manage in terms of like people crossing back and forth. Why is it so difficult for North Koreans to cross this border yeah. um, other than the fence and the barbed wire? Uh, there's landmines. Ah, yes. All over the place. From, See, the, from the war. From the war, yeah. From the war that, you know, because uh, there's so little traffic, they haven't bothered, bothered to go back in there and, and clean out those mines. Interesting. Yeah. There was some... And there's there's guns pointed from both borders so are there yeah areas here where are easy yeah you know, i'm assuming there's like the stations are set up to where they're going to be at the most easily point of crossing over right like there's no mountain there or valley mm. in the way or river how do you have an idea of how many of those crossing points there are and well to, to you again just for clarification, yeah. Do any refugees cross this border, <laughs> or is it all well, through China? We've seen one. That's true. We've seen the we, video. The of soldier. One. The soldier. Yes. And he crossed at that point where uh, the the joint, the joint. The security, JSA, yeah, J, yeah. JSA, where which is the heavy, most heavily guarded one <laughs> yeah. of all the. But it must the be the points. most easily accessible too. Yeah, I wonder though. But he had a very specific plan. Uh, and by the way, listeners, you can look this up or check our old podcast out on the um, soldier. There's a North Korean soldier that tried to cross the border, and he got and shot it was at. all on CCTV camera from the south side. Yeah, and he got shot at and uh, made it across. And he still in the made end. it across. And, but it took days because he was crawling basically on hand on his belly yeah. across this two mile, right. or the but it, two kilometers on the North Korean side rather. So they were monitoring him from the south, and at night they were using thermal imaging, right, to to see if he was still alive. Yeah. And so that is a, the level of technology that they're using to monitor these borders. It's so hard to get across. Ah, I see. Yeah. It's like the predators watching <laughs> <laughs> every every inch of the yeah. border. So you got to cover yourself with mud because yeah, that totally Arnold. works yes. against thermal imaging. <laughs> You just got to get mud, lots of mud. Yeah. And then get across that border before the predator finds you. Uh huh. But do they have that thermal imaging on the north side? <laughs> I'm sure they do. I'm sure they, they do. do. Okay. I yeah. guess they would. That technology is not like that advanced. Um, all right. So all right. All right, where, they can't get across we? there. Yeah. And, and, and no one in crossing borders history has come across to there, you're saying? Like, no one, you've never found someone I've never met or anyone. met someone that's been able no to cross way. to there. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I guess the landmines is a big deal. I just feel like that's a lot of land to cover, though, with just bodies. But yeah. it is and it is, I guess. You know, like 155 miles. I don't know. I don't know. You want to try? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't like moving and crawling and things <laughs> like that. But I'm just curious. You know, I'm always curious of yeah. testing the lines of these things. But landmines makes a big deal. Yep. It's the landmines that are the big issue. Um, So... The DMZ has kind of become, obviously, this very uh, iconic military spot. But mm-hmm. it's also now, as you can tell from the, if you watch the Conan thing, it's like a big tourist thing now yes. to go there. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously. Yeah, I've you, been there. So you have. Okay, yeah. let's talk about that. What, what was your experience like? Tell us about, take us through that. And where yeah, did you go? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, it's called Panmunjom. Yes. Um, it's like this touristy type of area. And um, it's... It, it, it's like an amusement park almost on the the south side. Um, it's very kid friendly. It has these like playgrounds. <laughs> it's so weird. What do it's you like see? It's like the weirdest place but ever. Like, but okay, so but can you see North Korea from there, or are there like yeah. markers? Yeah, they have those tourist, you know, binocular things. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 a coin and, yeah, and stuff. What do you yeah. see? You see. You just Nothing. you just see the DMZ, yeah. You just see the DMZ. You could see some military installations. You could see a huge North Korean flag, um, some 
sayings in Korean as well. Is Panmunjeon where the JSA is? Yes. Okay. So that's the same it's city. Room, it's the same area. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I, I, I've never been. I heard mm-hmm. that. I think you have to like, um, you have to like reserve or like you have to tell them you're coming. Right? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's still a mili- active military site. To get into Panmunjeom. To you, the city. So Panmunjeom is like the, the JSA. It's the center of it. And so South Korean citizens cannot enter into that for some reason. Really? So you have to show your U.S. passport to get into that area. Is it, uh, describe the area. Is it like a city or is it like... It, it's, I don't know. It's kind of like, uh, it's, it's just a little town. It's just a few buildings in the middle of, in the middle of uh, a forest. Interesting. Wooded area. Yeah. And so <laughs> to your point about like the tourist thing, I was like looking this up. Yeah. Jay, you can pull up that the Popeyes. Of course, there's a yes. Popeyes chicken in <laughs> Pamunjan. It's crazy. There's it's like a mall. Obscene. Like, look at this picture. There's a little like mall. A, yeah. There's a mall. If you a bunch of restaurants. If you Google this, um, I think I found this on someone's like personal Flickr that just <laughs> went to like South Korea. But there's like Popeyes. There's a mall. There's like all sorts of tourist stuff right across from one of the most. Um, desolate or hermit kingdom yes yeah, they call it and a place where they're struggling to eat calories and this you can have Popeye's chicken by the way good choice you know it's Popeye's Popeye's is solid you know it's my it's my choice yeah over, over KFC, KFC. Yeah. I, I agree <laughs> I don't think we want like a white old colonel <laughs> standing across <laughs> the border of that, North that, that, that would not wise. look good you know but Popeye even though he's smiling yeah. the colonel you know like we might get some sniper action <laughs> from <laughs> North I'm Korea the thinking they're, gonna, they're taking out one of our top officials yeah, over there. Especially, uh, especially the a stat, a statue of the colonel wearing his white suit and bow tie. <laughs> I think. Anyway, yeah, they have a Popeye's there. It's so Did you eat crazy. there? Crazy. Yes, I had to. Oh, you did? I had to. They didn't have the chicken sandwich there, though. <laughs> I went there it wasn't before there. the yeah. big, before chicken, the big sand- chicken sandwich, sandwich craze. craze. Yeah. That's I, Okay. There's tourism there, but let me let me just say this, listeners. There is tourism on the other side too. Um, yeah. If you YouTube this, not now because obviously North Korea closes borders after 2019 and COVID, but you could take tours to North Korea. And if you look at um, Jay, if you could pull that picture of the DMZ of us looking across at the North Korean building, there's like this iconic North Korean building right across the line from the South Korean side, mm. and it's like this big tall old look yeah that building right there oh yeah 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 Mm -hmm. um it's like two stories two and a half stories tall it like towers over the south korean side which Mm -hmm. doesn't have i mean i'm sure the south korean side has buildings we just have photos from the other side looking at us i guess that's a perspective thing but there are youtubers and 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 many chinese tours that go and you can get into that building oh wow and there's so many videos uh, we can post these in the in the notes as well of like the youtubers who are travel youtubers on that roof of that building looking into the South Korean side wow. from North Korea. So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit the kettle, and, kettle in the pot, you know what I mean, <laughs> North Korea. Like, tourism is a very capitalist thing, which, again, I'm not – I think you should open your borders. So, um, But You're there's tourism on both sides yeah. of this, which is so ridiculous to me that this is like a, a very intense political, mm-hmm. militarized – zone and area and issue and now what do we do we bring popeyes and tour guides <laughs> it's crazy and uh donald trump visited in 2019 was it okay and um i he, remember he shook kim jong-un's hand and kim jong-un held his hand and walked in walked him into north korea south korea or he, but did kim jong-un come into south korea i think trump went into north korea so he pulled him across the line. <laughs> he <laughs> like shoot him. He wouldn't like bring him over. <laughs> yeah, they, they, and Donald Trump was the first U.S. sitting president, I think, to yeah uh, walk into North Korea. It's pretty crazy. Or invited in yeah. like that, really. Yeah, well, that is crazy. It's crazy. So a lot of um, you know, momentous things here happening at this DMZ. Yeah. Um. Something that's not talked about as much, which again, you can find all this anywhere, but um, 
one of the things that's happened, the unique things that's happened because of that two kilometer um, gap or, or buffer zone rather, mm-hmm. the nature in this area has gone like berserk. Yeah. In a good way. I shouldn't say berserk. Has just flourished. That's a better word. Right. Has flourished. Because of the lack of human. Um, exactly. Yeah. Because we're not allowed to know. Basically, no people are allowed to be in these yeah. zones. Mm-hmm. It's um, two point. What did I say? Two point four mile area yeah. for one hundred fifty five miles, mm-hmm. minus these little civilian um, cities, untouched yeah. nature. And it's yeah. wild because all these scientists have done these studies of biodiversity and how like these rare animals and birds are coming back, yeah, and flourishing because humans aren't there. Go yeah, figure. so a lot of a lot of people think that uh, you know Korea, the two Korea should turn that into a wildlife refuge, um, turn the DMZ into a wildlife, re- like kind of like a African safari uh, with landmines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so there's this guy um, Sung Ho Lee. He's the mm-hmm. president of the DMZ Forum, which yes. is a group that campaigns to protect the area's ecological and cultural heritage. Um, And he's quoted saying, scientists are amazed by this reclamation by nature regenerating itself. Um, So many scientists really want to research what's happened here for more than, it's been 70 years, like we said, 70 years, and that it's an accidental paradise. You know what this reminds me? It's like the irony of ironies, right? It's ironic, but it's also like frustrating and like um, how humans are just, we're just viruses the, going back to the <laughs> matrix here like, yeah. we're just viruses we just like destroy everything yes. and and what's ironic to me or the there are tons of ironies here but the most i guess uh agitating one for me is mm. like we could still end it in two seconds we just gotta throw off some missiles <laughs> and all that ecology that came back mm. is gonna be gone yes not let alone there are a bunch of landmines <laughs> still in there yeah I yeah want, it's it's crazy it's crazy that this place with uh, uh, missiles, bullets, thermal imaging protecting either side of it, this is the place where nature has reclaimed. It's very beautiful, actually. And also, it looks beautiful from just yeah. the photos. No, the concept of it is beautiful. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. You went figurative <laughs> there. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a place of war has turned into this refuge for animals and, and nature. I don't know. It's, it's, that is beautiful. It is the irony of ironies. Life coming from death. Y- yeah, exactly. But then landmines producing more <laughs> death accidentally. <laughs> I wonder yeah. how often like a goat like steps on a landmine and just eats it. Right. <laughs> like I wonder if you just hear popping every so often. Right, every so a often. I'm sure. just like goes off. I thought I heard like the tiger. There was a tiger in there, like a, a an old Asian tiger. <laughs> that sounds like a a myth, but continue. No, in <laughs> like a in white the DMZ, pink tiger. No, 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 not a Siegfried and Roy. <laughs> <laughs> an actual native species that was almost wiped out. Okay, and uh, it's back. I heard. I th- and this is this is totally totally unverified, but I. I We'll look it up. Yeah. What what species have returned? Jay? Well, here, I've got a, while Jay looks that up, yeah. I've got a, a trivia question for you, which I thought All was right. fun. And maybe you will Let's know. Maybe it. you know. I don't know how well your animal knowledge is. <laughs> Here's the question. Which endangered animal comes to the DMZ every winter? And I'll give you options. It's got to be a bird, some sort of bird. I'll give you options. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. A mountain goat, a crane, an otter. I don't know why this fourth option is so specific. Stellar's sea eagle. <laughs> um, and here's the hint. It is a natural monument in Korea. Stellar sea eagle. You would think that. I think they just <laughs> threw you a head fake because oh. it's so specific. It's the crane. Yeah. There's like this endangered crane mm. that appears and returns to the DMZ every year. Oh, cool. Yeah, which is like, to your point, like, it's like beautiful. Like it's... Yeah. It's life replenished itself. Yeah, it is. But the, then the minefields are there, though. Too. <laughs> Maybe that's why birds can return because they're in the air and they're not. They could land on trees, maybe, <laughs> and not hit the ground. You know. 
not the Chicago birds here. They're <laughs> too lazy for flight. They're just, just pigeons walk around. They'd be blowing up left and right. Yeah. All right, we got a tiger here. What is this, Jay? What am I looking at? Can, can it's the you? Siberian tiger. It's uh, native to the area. Oh, okay. The, uh, Asian tiger is not 100% incorrect. They also call it the Manchurian tiger. See? So okay. You're that, about 50%. We should call it the okay. DMZ tiger now. Is, is DMZ. It, is it? So is it in the DMZ? Um, they say that this tiger has been wiped out. Oh, I see. But <laughs> oh, all right. It could be a recent news article or something like sad that, saying that they're coming back. It's okay. Oh, sad. I hope it wasn't the landmines. Hmm. But it's you know, a, it was just probably the chemical warfare and the missiles really that wiped it out at the time of the war. You know, if I was a um, MMA fighter. I would want my um, nickname to be the Manchurian Tiger. That'd be really cool. <laughs> the Manchurian Tiger. <laughs> what is Manchurian? Manchuria is the area uh, in Northeast China, right outside uh, of the Korean Peninsula. It used to be part of the Korean Kingdom. Why were you? So you're 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 hailing back to old Korea and yeah, being the Koryo Dynasty. Yeah. Okay, so Manchuria was a little bit Korean there. Oh, very much. It's but still very much. I, I would Korean. say that, that MMA for MMA name is. Uh, I feel like that's more of like a WWE <laughs> persona. Like, yeah, my name. You gotta would be the Korean. Be you know, like Chung. you got like Korean zombie <laughs> out there. Oh, the, really? Yeah, MMA fighter is uh, one of the more. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well known. Yeah, yeah. There's a ton of Korean MMA fighters, but the Korean zombie is like that's that's a name to fear. The Manchurian Korean Tiger. Zombie. I feel like you're gonna come out with like a cape and like speedos on. <laughs> <laughs> and do like a backflip off the top buckle <laughs> and belly flop on somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can do that too. I support you though. <laughs> if you do that, I would totally support you. I'll be your sidekick, your tag team partner. All right. All right. Last question here. The DMZ. Yeah. 50 years from now. How are we talking about it? Hmm. Is it still there? Is this the, this, the, the longest going Guinness record of armistice agreements Koreans are so stubborn <laughs> including <laughs> myself <laughs> including myself there's something about uh, us we just will not give a give an inch and so if i had to guess i don't know i would not i i i would think that everything would Stay the same. Unfortunately, I want it in to fifty change. years. In fifty years, yeah. Wow, it's been seventy years. This is true, but it's been a little bit different. I would say in the last ten years, even mm. thirteen years, has been again a president was welcomed over the border. Yes, but it did take seventy years, and since that president has walked over, tensions have again escalated. I'm I'm such a pessimist. You're asking the wrong person. If you want something <laughs> hopeful, go go to go to someone else. But yeah, I mean, I am not hopeful for a change. I am outside of some sort of miracle, which I do hope and pray for. If things stay the same in the world as far as the power structures, I cannot see this thing changing at all. What about you? You know what? I, I am more of an optimist. However, in this case, I feel like it's more of a, um, it, it's been baking too long. The, mm. the, the bread has already been ruined. It's, it's established. It's when you get used to something. You get used to a border. Yeah. I don't know, I have a good example in my mind. But when you get used to a border being there, mm -hmm. that's just what it is now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's no longer... Gone are the days of considering it as one country. Right. You know, if it's like, you know, East and West Germany, I feel like that happened quickly. Yeah. Like it was relatively. Right, yeah. Quickly. Relatively quickly. In the 90s. Within a decade. Yeah. Right. Was that a decade? No, no. The change of it. Right. The, the going down the Berlin oh. Wall falling and stuff that like happened within a decade. Right. Yeah. It happened I mean, obviously it was a long, yeah, yeah, yeah. a long journey to get there, mm -hmm. but it was pretty quick when it came down. When the wall came. Yeah. Down. And when the wall came down and. 
and there was like a lot more going on too right. in terms of like people didn't accept that mm-hmm. like they didn't accept there to be west and east anymore like right. where here there's no movement towards accepting the same being on the same page at least and also north korea is now nuclear i think that is a another huge factor that if we were to ever attack there is a nuclear threat and so yeah like the what the world fears it, it's not necessarily the nuclear weapons or these countries having the nuclear weapons. It's if the nuclear weapons get into the, the hands of crazy people and North Korea has sort of um, played that card of the crazy guy. Don't mess with us. If the world does not trust you, if they think you're erratic and you have a nuke, I don't know. It's, it's, it's going to be really hard. Yeah, it's hard to come back from that. (laughs) (laughs) It's hard to come back from, uh, you know, to to reunify a country that was like, I'm going to nuke you back to wherever your ancestors, which are also my ancestors from. And right. Oh, let's 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 (laughs) let's, let's join up sides again. Yeah. You know, it's going to be hard. We kind of burn some bridges here. Exactly. Um, Literally, too. There are probably some bridges out there that don't exist Mm because of the landmines. Uh, stay tuned, listeners. We're going to continue this conversation. The DMZ is such a big... And it's a show name. we got to do two episodes yeah. on this. All right? And we will get into the crazy stuff that happened. Well, yeah, we will. There's always crazy stuff. <laughs> All right, so stay tuned for DMZ Part 2. The mission of Crossing Borders is to show the compassion of Christ to North Korean refugees and their children. If you want to give, get involved, or just learn more, Check out our website at crossingbordersnk.org.